Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Techno Minute. In today's episode, I'm going to show you how to go from simple mobile gaming on your smartphone to classic retro gaming on your PC. So first things first, shout out to Luke Nemitz for making this awesome background music. If you're interested in some of his music, go ahead and take a look at his SoundCloud. I'll leave the link down in the description below. In today's episode, I'm going to show you how to set up a retro gaming emulator and front end in just under 6 minutes. Alright, so the first thing we're going to do is open up Chrome. In Chrome, we're going to search for two things. The first one is called Launchbox. When we click that, go ahead and search for it and select the download link. Once you've done that, enter in your email and download the program. The second one is called RetroArch. Again, click on the first link, go to the download tab, but here we're going to pay close attention to downloading the proper program. We're going to download the 64-bit version, not the installer. After both of those programs are downloaded, head on over to your downloads folder. Here you'll see a zipped version of RetroArch. You're going to want to click that and unzip it to your downloads folder. Once that's unzipped and in your folder, go ahead and copy it we're going to paste it in a special location. However, before we do this, we have to run the LaunchBox setup. Go ahead and click on it, go through the prompts, and once that's finished up, you're going to want to head on over to your PC drive, click Users, Your Name, scroll down about halfway to LaunchBox, and go ahead and double click that folder. Now in here, we're going to want to create a new folder, and we're going to name it Emulators. This is where we're going to go back to the Downloads folder, copy that RetroArch folder, and then paste the new RetroArch into the Emulators folder. Now once that's finished, you're going to want to go ahead and double click on the RetroArch folder. Now scroll down to the very bottom of the page and click on the RetroArch application. Once that's done, it's going to open up RetroArch in a small window. From here, we need to make this into full screen. So we're going to scroll over to the left using the arrow keys, click Video, and scroll down and click Start in Full Screen Mode. From now, RetroArch will automatically always open in full screen mode. From here, scroll to the left and scroll down to Online Updater. Go ahead and click that. Now we're going to click the Core Updater. The cores are what enables the console to be emulated and play those retro games. In this case, we're going to search for the NES Core. So we're going to scroll all the way down till we find the NES Nestopia UE Core. Go ahead and click on this link and hit Enter. Now we will also be using the SNES for this tutorial, so you're going to want to scroll down to the SNES 9X core and download that as well. Alright, so after that you're going to want to exit RetroArch and open up LaunchBox. Once that opens up, go ahead on over to the Tools tab, click Import, and then ROM Files. Scroll on over to Next and click the Next button. Now here you're going to want to click that Add Folder button. This is going to select the game folder of which you've stored your NES ROM files. In my case, this will be the desktop and then the NES games folder. Once you've added that folder, go ahead and click the next button. From there, we're going to select the platform. In this case, it'll be the NES. Click next. Here, we'll also choose the emulator. In this case, it'll be RetroArch, which we installed earlier. Now in this step, we're going to want to click the copy the files into my LaunchBox game folder. Hit next one more time. And from here, we're going to download the images for the games. Now, if you don't already have an account with EMU Movies, you might want to create one. This just allows you to download extra media, music, and movies for your games when you have them in the front end. Now at this page, you're not going to want to specify any custom options. Go ahead and click next and you'll finally be brought to a page that looks something like this. This is just going to be a list of the games that you want to install. After you've clicked finish, you will notice that in the bottom left hand corner, the games will begin to import into your LaunchBox library. And now you have successfully installed NES games into your LaunchBox. From here, go ahead and do the exact same process for the SNES games. And there you have it. You can now click through your library and select whatever game you would like to play. Upon clicking a title, you will notice that the game will play background music and a third-party artwork of the title will show up in the background. From here, you can directly double-click the title and start playing. However, if you want a more streamlined version of your library, 
you will have to purchase the premium license of LaunchBox. Upon doing so, you will have an option to launch the big box version of LaunchBox. This will enable you to have a console-like experience on your PC. Now I bet some of you are wondering, well, what about the inputs? And for this guide, I actually picked up two pairs of retro SNES controllers on Amazon from a company named Inex. These controllers were packaged in two and were about $11. And to my surprise, the quality of these controllers are quite good. The buttons are concave and responsive, and the shape of the controller is almost identical to the original SNES controller. Now the only issue I have with these controllers is that the D-pad button seems to be a bit mushy and not as tactile. This isn't necessarily a big deal, but if you really want a good retro gaming experience, go ahead and take a look at the 8-bit though SNES 30 Pro. It retails for $49 on Amazon and will provide superior quality to the Inex. If you're interested in any of these options, I'll leave the links to them down in the description below. Well that seems to be it for this video. Once again, shout out to Luke Nemitz for creating this retro feeling music. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, please like and consider subscribing, it's free. Also make sure to hit that notification button so you don't miss out on any more videos like this one. And until next time, peace.